Welcome to the Hustle and Flow Chart Podcast with your hosts, Matt Wolf and Joe Fear. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Hustle and Flow Chart Podcast. My name is Matt Wolf, and I'm here with my partner, Matt, forgot my name. Whoa. Joseph Fear. <laughs> Joe Fear. Joe Fear. Yeah. And we, we've got an awesome show for you today. Uh, we've actually got a fellow Evergreen Prophets Letter subscriber on the show yeah. today. Uh, his name is Omari. He's a father of six. He's a husband, a retired Navy chief, uh, turned hustler. Um, he started his first business at 13 cutting lawns. And now he runs a very successful firearms training business called 10X Defense. Um, he's learned about direct response marketing. He's done a bunch of copywriting. Uh, um, he's, he's done copywriting for me in the past. He's done mm-hmm. copywriting for a lot of really well-respected marketers. So we couldn't be more excited to just dive into all of this stuff that Omari's done in his uh, in his very long and successful career. So thanks so much for joining us, Omari. How are you doing today? Man, I'm good. I'm I'm trying to contain myself. Um, <laughs> I'm so excited. As you both know, I've been a fan for years now. So to actually get the invite to be on a live podcast with you, I'm stoked right now. So Sweet. I'm gonna try to contain myself. <laughs> don't don't contain it, man. <laughs> Just let it out. <laughs> That's cool. No, man. I've I've always been in Matt and I both have been with you in terms of the hustle. Um, I think you've known Matt maybe a little longer than me. But mm-hmm. but either way, man, like, yeah, so for everyone who's listening here, Amari just moved to Texas, but yeah. since then, or before then, you know, he's done just like you said, copywriting, firearms training. I mean, he did the Navy stuff for a long time. You got, you got a, you know, kids, you got a big family, you got, you, yeah. you, you're always hustling, man. So, so, so there's a, there's, there's a lot of balance there. And I imagine there's a lot of, uh, systems and, and things that you've put in place to, to make sure you're balancing all that stuff that you're going on. So we're going to dive into a lot of that kind of sure. stuff today. Um, cool. but let, let's start off by talking about what your main business is right now. Um, the, your 10 X defense, your firearms training business. Let's talk about that. Can you kind of tell us about that and how you got into that and what led you down that path of doing that? Yeah. So right now, um, that's not the main business is it is the business that got me started in marketing. So I'll kind of talk about that. Um, I'm doing that more on the side, more okay. private courses, stuff like that. Um, but I got into it. And um, I started 10X Defense in 2012. Mm -hmm. Um, But before that, I was teaching firearms um, outside the military, but I got certified while I was in the military. Mm -hmm. So uh, through a guy named uh, Rob Pincus, a very good friend of mine, dear, dear friend, mentor, got me in the firearms training game. So I got certified in his program, which is called the Combat Focused Shooting Program. And it's primarily a defensive shooting program. And I got certified back in 2007. Hmm. And the reason why I got certified was because um, my military unit at the time, we needed some extra training. We needed to think outside the box. So I took it on upon myself to go do so. Uh, Made a couple phone calls and and got connected with Rob through another good friend of mine. Um, And I just started... I didn't necessarily when – I, when I started, I didn't necessarily think about teaching in the public sector, right, So or in the private sector. So mm-hmm. the public sector would be government, state, federal, local, right, and then the private sector is with civilians. Mm-hmm. Um, so in the beginning, I didn't really think that's what it was going to be. I was just training my guys. I had a captive audience, but I got very good at teaching very fast because I had a captive audience, right? Right. Mm-hmm. So – um, Rob had invited me to, um, what happened? Uh, he was talking to me about possibly teaching civilians. So I just got with some friends and started teaching my close friends and everybody got excited. And eventually uh, about 2011, 2009 to 2011, I had partnered with another guy, a uh, buddy of mine, uh, who actually runs another company in Texas area. He he and I started teaching the civilian market together. Two year about 2011, he was like, "Hey man, um, if you want to start your thing, you need to go learn marketing." Mm-hmm. And I was like, "Oh, okay." So he had recommended uh, we were teaching a course because I was also contracting with another company teaching unarmed firearms, combatives. Mm. And we did a course in Maryland and I got a chance to meet a gentleman by the name of Lloyd Irvin. Mm -hmm. And when I met Lloyd, I was watching him teach class. I'm also a big 
Brazilian Jiu Jitsu fan. Oh, so nice. I was able to see him, watch him coach his guys, and I just got so excited. So anyway, we get back, and Coach's like, hey, Lloyd Irvin's coming to L.A., and he's doing a marketing uh, seminar. And I didn't know marketing other than flyers, business cards. That's about it. So um, at the time, I didn't have a very big budget. So I went up to L.A. from San Diego, stayed in a little hotel, and went to the – it was held at the Westin. And he did um, – it was a three-day event for mixed martial arts uh, instructors and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu business owners. And that's how I learned about direct response marketing. Hmm. Um, so from then, I just kind of took – I think I still have my notes. I guarantee you I do. Uh, from that first black, time? From that first time. Wow. I called it a black book. And I remember I did a video. I think I still have the video – of the brainstorming session I did with my buddies uh, as we built 10X Defense, uh, my partner Eli and uh, my uh, good friend Josh. And I remember recording the whole thing. Wow. And I just got fired up about direct response marketing. Like I was like, this is like unreal. <laughs> um, so that's that's how I got my start. Then I started uh, 10X Defense. You know, I've taught uh, in conjunction with the um, – with uh, ICE training company, which basically developed the combat focused shooting program through Rob. Mm. Um, I've taught all over the country, man. I've been all over the country. I've taught civilian, military, law enforcement. It was just a great ride. Um, and like I said, I still do it from time to time now, but uh, marketing has kind of consumed me. That's great. Uh, in a good way. No, it's, it's, it's interesting because uh, if that's not, because I knew that wasn't the main business, but you do a lot of stuff. I mean, like you're a hustler at heart, you know, but <laughs> yeah. I feel like with that marketing, you know, that that whole conference you went to there in L.A., that totally puts you on a whole path that you probably didn't even see coming, you know? No, no, I didn't see it. You know, um, my I'd like I, I decided I wanted to join the Navy at the age of 13. Wow. Right. I had already knew at 13 at 16. I raised my hand for the. Uh, delayed entry at 17. I left three weeks after graduating from high school. Dang. And um, so my my path, my original path was to become a Navy SEAL. Like that was my deal. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually got a chance to go to uh, SEAL training. Uh, I got medically disenrolled and I tried to go back and, you know, I have uh, asthma. So mm -hmm. that dis disqualified me. So I had to find something else to do. Um, and with some help of some buddies, uh, eventually it led me to direct response marketing and, and it's, um, you know, like I said, it, it, if I'd have thought 10, 20 years ago that I would be where I am right now doing what I do right now, <laughs> getting to know the people that I know, I'd have told you you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, right? Yeah, man. I mean, it seems like you got the hustler at heart, but you do have a vision for yourself too. And so mm -hmm. you must have found, you must have some way that you kind of balance the two. To not make yourself um, too insane, you know. <laughs> but. I think it's a uh, balance by imba imbalancing, you know. Um, yeah. A lot of the the biggest, the best reference I can give myself is to give kind of people give people a reference of my life. Uh, if you look at um, Gary Vanderchuk's life, mm -hmm. right, that's mine, <laughs> right. So mm -hmm. uh, when and that's what kind of attracted me to Gary was like he publicly says it, but I have been doing it. People know me. I'm everywhere. Yeah. You know. Uh, my wife tells people, hey, if you want to find Omari, just check out on Facebook. You know, <laughs> uh, I have people that follow me, you know, on Facebook to see where I am. Um, but I think the just now am I starting to trying to get the balance. But I understand and my you know, my wife, she's been with me since, uh, you know, since we were kids off and on. And really? so she, uh, I think having permission and having an agreement with your partner, whoever you're with. Uh, is huge, yeah, right? Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. having to deal with me going through deployments, I mean, I've deployed, I've traveled all my life. So she's kind of used to, you know, me getting out there and getting it. Yeah. And that's important. Like I need that room because I don't really know as a business owner, you have a goal, but you don't really know where the opportunity is going to come from. So mm -hmm. you got to be able to go where you need to go and do what you need to do and put the work in as long as you need to, to get the overall goal mm. accomplished. Dude, that's so true because I feel like, yeah, I mean, it's not for the weak of heart, you know, the <laughs> the the one that's going to gag at the, the slightest of, of, you know, a mistake or a fail, a sh you know, a shitty thing that you launched or marketing campaign that failed. 
But you mm-hmm. got to push through, man. I mean, it's like the content. You never know when a blog post is going to hit or a video or whatever you put out there. No, yeah. and it, it gets uh, – I'd, I'd like to say uh, there's a cool song that I like by Meek Mill called uh, Levels. And mm-hmm. there truly is levels to entrepreneurship, which is you know, why I call myself a hustler because I think there's a distinct difference between entrepreneur and hustler, right? So the, the hustler, <laughs> depending on who they are – I'm trying to graduate to entrepreneur, right? So an <laughs> entrepreneur, I want to have a team and have people working for me and have an office and be able to come and go as I please. But before you get there, you got to hustle, mm. right? Mm-hmm. So I understand that in order for me to get to the entre- the true entrepreneur level, um, that I just got to hustle till, you know, I either fall out and I figure <laughs> if I pass out from it, I'll get street cred. Yeah. So, you know, it's, That's it's kind of like, uh, you know, that's that's how I think. Interesting, man. Yeah. So, I mean, is there a uh, is there a way like uh, is there a system that keeps that hustle strong so you don't burn out or you have some kind of thing that you can I mean, like what's what's your I guess what's your process when it comes to hustling smart? Because I feel like you have um, you're not a dumb hustler. <laughs> there's a difference. Right, you can right. just be an idiot doing everything on Craigslist or something. But you're not doing that. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, so one is I think. For me, it's just uh, you got to know where you're going first, and then you got to look at the things that are going to accomplish that. And that's where people get stuck because there's a thousand ways to accomplish the goal. Mm -hmm. And then you kind of pick, you know, after some trial and error, you kind of get the top three. And then you manage, you know, you can either manage your work around your life or your life around your work. And I've done both, and I find that when I manage my work around my life, it works better, mm-hmm. right? So what that means is when I wake up in the morning, it's not, okay, I got to get stuff done. It's, okay, the first two, three hours of my day is mine, right? Mm-hmm. And then the next two, three hours, I have two working blocks. So I'll have a block of work in the morning with an afternoon break, and then I'll have a block of work in the evening. Mm-hmm. Um, now, what's dangerous for me is because of my military background, I have no concept of the clock, right? (laughs) Mm -hmm. So in civilian life, you go from nine to five. Well, in the military, you go from nine and you may not stop until nine, two days later. Right, right. right? I've I've done that. So um, my ability to work is a lot different than people who aren't conditioned that way. Hmm. Right. So I try to block everything out, but you have to understand that, like, if I'm in crunch time, I'll push through. Right. Mm -hmm, So the mm -hmm. last, you know, last three days, I haven't got to bed till like two in the morning. Mm. (laughs) Right. I get up, you know, nine o'clock. I'm done at two, you know, and at two, I'm at that point where, okay, everything's good. Right. So it's a constant ebb and flow of finding that. But going back to that system, it's your time first, get your head together, then it's work, then it's break then it's work and then push on. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Um, now in our, our sort of pre interview questions, you know, we Mm -hmm. always, whenever we bring somebody onto this show, there's, there's a couple questions that we have them fill out before they come on. Um, you talked about your, the, who, you know, system for lead generation. Do you yeah. want to do you want to speak into that for a minute? We've, we've got a couple different places we want to go with this podcast, but I want to make okay. sure that we have a, a chance to share this this who you know system for lead generation because, you know, who who doesn't want to learn more ways to drive leads? <laughs> well, right, yeah. So it's actually nothing new. It's just I kind of put it in simple terms, right? So I try to put it in simple terms. So mm-hmm. it's the premise is a lot of people. Every business owner, pretty much, one of the things they'll say is, "Hey, how do I get leads?" Right. Uh-huh. So that's a big problem. Um, mm-hmm. And and having a good flow of leads is um, important. Now, most people, right? Uh, I'd say let's take the eighty twenty rule. Eighty percent of people, <laughs> are, are let's start with the twenty. The twenty percent have the tools or the knowledge of the tools and tactics and strategies. You know, they're the um, subscribers and newsletters, they belong to masterminds, whatever, Mm the 80% is still trying to figure it out, right? So this is more of a strategy for the most of the people, the 80%. And the who you know strategy starts with who do you know? (laughs) So when I built 10X Defense, I started with the people that I knew first. And then I delivered the best 
you know, courses or best service I could. And then, of course, they told people who told people so that it reached a point that, you know, two, three years after I got started, I started getting Facebook messages about, hey, my buddy took this course, man. I, I, I want to take it. Like, how do I get involved? Right. Mm -hmm. So that's the whole premise. Start with who, you know, um, and do it in a way that you're. Um, and it's tricky, right? You don't want to do it in a way that says, Hey, I'm trying this out. You want to do it in a way that you are where you need to be. Right. So when I was teaching people that I knew it wasn't, Hey, I'm just getting started. I need to test this out. It's like, Hey, I know what I'm doing. Let me put you through it. And then the second part of that is actually collecting the feedback and getting, uh, getting actual feedback, not just from the, the service or the product, but the experience mm -hmm. and actually documenting that feedback. Well, what does that do? Well, that gives you the information you need for the marketing message that you need to put out as you start expanding outside the people, you know, so those are like case studies and testimonials, yeah. like, but in depth ones, like you said, mm -hmm. yeah, use mm -hmm. cases. Got yeah. It. So case studies, um, testimonials, a uh, video of them actually using the product or experiencing the service, mm -hmm. because all that is um, from a copywriting standpoint, you're getting the words, you're getting the, um, the, the true emotional experience that the people are having, the people that you know, so now you can translate into the written word or video or a sales letter or whatever mm -hmm. and put that out to the market you're 60, 70 percent ahead of the game because sure. the hardest thing about marketing is trying to figure out what words to use in order to attract the, the masses. Hmm. And that's an opportunity there to squash any objections that potential customers have, mm -hmm. you know? Yes, yes. Uh, and, and that's, for example, I got a great example of that. So I taught a course uh, in Utah. It was an all-women's course. And one of the ladies there was like afraid of ammo, let alone afraid of a gun, but just afraid of <laughs> just the, the ammo. <laughs> yeah, just like right. the ammo. She'd see a bullet and it, it would trigger something. She's mm, afraid right? somebody's going to so, throw it at her really hard. <laughs> say again? She's afraid somebody's going to throw it at her really hard. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, it was crazy, right? But <laughs> she was a great, she was a great lady. And what happened was through her experience after the, the day of training, she was like, she felt more confident. Mm -hmm. She wasn't afraid. She, because she, was familiar with the tool and understood its limitations, she wasn't as afraid. Mm -hmm. So now what that did for me as I collected that information, whenever I had someone that would say, oh, well, I'm afraid of X, Y, Z, well, I had the words and, and whatever I needed to say in order to um, attract that person because I had somebody that had that experience. So I was mm -hmm. able to leverage that information, the testimony of the case study for someone else who may have had the same objections, the same fears, you know? That makes sense, uh, yeah. It made the marketing process, you know, when I was marketing my firearms company, it made it easier to overcome objections, easier to write the message because I had already had people that have gone through it and I was just able to recycle that information. Yes. And then boom, you can even just like slap their video in there and you're like, oh, you got that question? Check this out right here. Yeah, exactly. this lady just overcame it. <laughs> cool, man. Well, yes. yeah, let's continue to, uh, what, number three? On on your little uh, Who You Know system? Hello, hello. Oh, oh. so number three. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I lost it for a second. Uh, that's all I was, good. I thought you were talking to Matt. We need, <laughs> like, prompts. Um, oh, yeah. So uh, the third part, so we got start with who you know. We got collect the feedback, right? And then... As you move forward through it, uh, you got to look at the tools and automation to expand or uh, expand reach with feedback is number three. So let's go back. So number one, present the offer to those you know. Hmm. Number two, get the feedback and stories, which is going to be important for copy. Mm -hmm. Number three is to expand your reach through feedback, influence, and the stories, right? So now you have a problem. Every solution opens up a new problem. The solution for you right now, start with people you know. Well, now you got to – how are you going to translate that into people that you don't know, mm. right? Um, and what I'd like to do is tap into people's influence, right? So everybody knows somebody that has the same similar goals, 
objectives, fears, concerns, challenges, problems, right? Right. So now what I did was through collecting the feedback and stories, what that did was made that person kind of a celebrity in their circle, right? Okay. So you ever had uh, – you ever did a testimony for somebody and they post it and then somebody else will see it and go, man, I saw you on X, Y, Z. Oh, yeah, for so, sure. Right. So using that to expand the reach. Right. Uh, use the even the the use the success and the failures to expand your reach to get to those outside of your market. But what's or outside of your uh, circle of influence. But what's good about that is. When you use the feedback and success stories of those that you already know, you automatically get kind of an endorsement from them when you start expanding out into that next ring, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So you're not coming in cold. You're kind of um, coming in a little bit warm because now the person that you don't know knows somebody that you know. Yeah, it, so it's a lot easier to to move around. Well, they're gonna uh, they're gonna probably share it with their friends. Now, now you're gonna you're gonna infiltrate maybe a new niche that you never even thought of. That this person well, could be like a doctor, and like you're like, why do I get a swarm of doctors wanting to learn how to shoot guns? You're yeah. like, I don't know, <laughs> it's because of that testimonial. Exactly. <laughs> exactly, and I and I, and I've had that happen. Right, there's so mm -hmm. many different niches within the training arena or any business. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so many different niches wrapped around a product or service. Those that you don't even know about. Right. So as you start sharing the feedback, sharing the stories, um, you'll get the those opportunities will pop up. Right. Oh, yeah. Um, so then number four is, I think, kind of the toughest part is uh, the use of tools and automation to expand reach. Right. And that's, mm -hmm. you know, everything that you guys write in the EGP newsletter mm -hmm. is all about the tools, the automation to kind of expand your reach and kind of scale what you're doing. Yeah. Um, the hang up there is the learning curve. Right. So most people and I and in the last six months, I've been doing a lot of consulting and, you know, I've had, you know, students all over the country. And what I find is we may be computer savvy. We may understand, but there's a lot of people that don't know how to use, you know, for example, Facebook for business purposes. Sure. Right. They either get in as soon as you get to the ad platform, you get intimidated. Right. <laughs> so what I like to tell people is uh, uh, and then I learned this. I, I'm just giving this from when Lloyd explained it way back in the day. I'll never forget this. He said either you do it or somebody else does it, but it can't not not get done mm. right Triple negatives right so as a business owner either you got to figure it out or you got to get somebody to figure it out for you yep That's delegation plain and simple bottom mm -hmm. line right so um there are different tools uh that people need to be aware of the main one that i always tell people about is an email list and yep. an email uh service provider that's kind of like number one um mm -hmm. like, and who you do you use for that Say again. Who do you use for that? Um, I've I've experienced a couple. I have uh, Infusionsoft, Active Campaign. I've been playing around with uh, Actionetics on ClickFunnels a lot lately. Yeah, yeah. Um, for people starting out, I mean, I don't think you can go wrong. Uh, if 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 you have less than a thousand people, you can pretty much try any of them, and then find out. The big thing is find out the one that works for you and how you work. Yeah. And what you're trying to accomplish. So Todd Brown, I've been following Todd Brown for a while. And what he says is, don't let the tool dictate your strategy. Let your strategy dictate the tool. Yeah, mm -hmm. so smart. Right. So um, that's with any tool. So uh, but email service provider, if you don't have one, you're not in the game. Hang it up. Mm. Um, <laughs> that's true, man. And that goes for every business, online, brick and mortar, anything. Yes. If you're not building anything. a list, what are you thinking? All right, all right, don't, yeah. don't hang it up. Just go sign up, you know, yeah. and, yeah. Then, and, then, and then you'll be cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sign up for one. I mean, some of them start for free, and there's plenty yeah. of training out there uh, on emails, um, on email service providers. So that's for the sure. main tool. And then you have the ones that this is also very important about this step is when you look at um, I should have also included platforms there. Mm. When you look at platforms for reaching your market, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, Instagram, Snapchat, um, a lot of a, a lot of information out there because it's so you know vast. 
a lot of people get stuck with which one or they try to attempt to do every one. Uh, yep. Do the one where your market is, period. Start there. If your market's on Facebook, do Facebook. If your market's on Instagram, do Instagram. You know what I mean? Yeah. Pick the one where your market is because at the end of the day, you can be awesome at Twitter. Uh, you can be awesome at LinkedIn. But if your market isn't there, then you're – in the wrong place, right? Same thing with Facebook. So in the firearms training industry, um, a lot of people converse on Facebook, but Facebook has an adverse outlook on firearms, right? right. It's it's one of those things, right? So, um, and this is something that uh, this is like brand new stuff. So if you're in the firearms niche, um, you're going to benefit from this. But <laughs> there's other places where you can advertise your business other than Facebook. <laughs> right Bow. Gotta go find yeah a lot of them. Right? there's there's a lot of places so you got to get out of the you know just because everybody um i'll take this from uh ryan chapman one of my mentors just because everybody's somewhere doesn't mean you need to be in the same place <laughs> mm -hmm. right? yep. it's so true yeah. sometimes you'll you'll crush your competition just by being contrarian to what everything's going on right yeah yep. um, do you have a couple places where you'd suggest that outside of the normal channels where you advertise yeah so um i've been looking at you know directories um so like in the firearms area i kind of poke around the the directories uh that list you know different gun shops different mm -hmm. instructors across the country um stuff like that yep. uh i've also you know, I, I I did a lot of um, I probably made most of my connections through networking. Right. So this is completely off the range, when, especially when you start talking about online marketing is actually getting in front of people. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mind blowing, huh? <laughs> yeah, shake hands. You know, if, if you're a business owner, and this is what I try to tell firearms instructors, if you're if you're a fire instructor and you're doing your training for profit, then you're a business owner, mm -hmm. which means you there's avenues within your own community, whether it's a networking group, chamber of commerce, wherever. You know, I got a lot of um, you know, being part of Henry's group, mutual mm -hmm. friend Henry, yep. being a part of that group, I got so much business from that group, just meeting people and, and helping people out and solving sure. problems face to face, which led me to other people, which led me to interviews and writing articles and all the other stuff. That's you know, how we met you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's how we met. Right? <laughs> that's right. So I can't stress enough the fact that you need to get out and go meet people. So Dan Kennedy would tell his guys back in the day, uh, I think he was in the chiropractor niche at the time. And what he would tell those guys was one day a week, get out of the office mm -hmm. and go do something, mm -hmm. right? Get out of the office and go meet some people. Um, that's still a thing. Um, Love it. And with the, the automation part, right? So um, that's also important because especially if you're a one person, two person, three person operation, you're, you're going to need automation. You're going to be able to, you're going to need to be able to take those things that you do over and over and over again, manually, and find a tool that will help you automate that. Hmm. Hey, right? I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna recommend something really quick here to automate. Yeah. So if we go back to getting feedback, stories, and video testimonials from people, mm -hmm. there's a new tool that we're starting to use called Boast IO Boast .io. And Omar, I don't know if you, you use this, but I would check it out. But you can you can automate these video testimonials so you pair this sucker up with your email system, you know, your follow up. So you get someone on a list, you get your, your customers on a list, send them an email with some kind of incentive to record a video for you. And you can automate that whole process. And obviously, if you have more people, this gets a little easier. Yeah. But um, uh, that's that's something that works really well for us. And our favorite way uh, to get testimonials is go to events like Traffic and Conversion Summit, find customers of ours, and hold a camera in front of their face and say, talk about our product. <laughs> that's, yeah. I think Omari knows that one well. He does. Oh, yes. Yes, very well. Very well. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I, however you can get them, you know, um, t testimonials and case studies like – if you're not doing those, and this is for any business, if you're not doing those, I mean, it, what, yeah. 40, 50, 60 percent of your marketing message is done. Mm -hmm. It's gone mm -hmm. because, like, yeah. you know, uh, you got to look at psychology. Right. So uh, I forgot where I think I heard this from Henry. Right. Uh, 
it was 20% of the people will believe what you say about you and your business, right? Mm. 80% will believe what others say about you and your business, both good and bad. Yeah, totally <laughs> true. It's the, it's, it's word of mouth, man, of other people sell your business. It's, yeah. You can't, yeah. I mean, that's how I grew my, I had a whole agency, animation agency, never spent money on, you know, paid traffic and all that stuff. But I, I just hit the payment hard, made a bunch of connections and it was all referrals. And yep. it, it brought me to here. It's great. You yep. can start any business that way. Yep. And when you, and when you add the tools and the automation to that word of mouth, I mean, dude, you can scale so fast, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, there, there's just so much power in, in, but the the core point of it is you got to get in front of people hmm. yeah. <laughs> right yeah. and it's better if uh you know i like uh i was just reading the email by brian kurtz um of uh the titans fame right old school cat mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. he said there has to be your marketing has to be online and offline and it needs to be able to integrate between the two yeah. so you need to be able to take those people that you meet face to face and put them in an online system. And you need to be able to take those that are online and get them offline. Yeah. You know, whether it's through, you know, I'm a big fan of direct mail on the back end. Um, you know, that's still a thing. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, yeah. you know, no doubt, uh, man. And no one's really doing it dude. except for us. I know a couple guys are. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> Um, I, that's the one tactic I hate, like saying publicly, because nobody's really doing it. And yeah. It's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, it doesn't work though. Yeah. Just do, don't. No, it doesn't work. Idea. It doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> but it, but to wrap up your little process here, you basically say, yeah, step five, rinse and repeat, right? So you can do it over and over again. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. If you um, can make one, or if you take one dollar, make it two. You got a business, and then just do that over and over and over again. Yeah. Simple. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's kind of one of the things that um. You know, one of the statements I was thinking about and I was watching a, a video Steve Harvey did about uh, making a million dollars and the concept is the same. Right. So a lot of people get stuck. I mean, firearms instructors, even other small business owners or potential small business owners that I've consulted over the last few years. It's, you know, if you can make one sale, you can make 10. So Heck just yeah. focus on making 10 sales. If you can do 10, you can do 100. If you can mm. do 100, you can do 1,000. Mm. Right. And then once you hit about, I think a hundred is the magic number in my mind. If you sell to a hundred people, I, I think you got something. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yeah. Right? So now you can make a decision whether you want to go through, you know, the rest of it, or if you go, I don't want to cap that and then pull it to another industry or product. Cause that's kind of what happened to me with firearms training and marketing. Right. Mm -hmm. So I had hit a level in firearms training where I had taught, you know, a bunch of people. And when I hit, you know, over, well over 100, I think uh, I've probably trained thousands by now over the last 10 years because mm. I've been teaching for 10 years. Wow. Um, and I reached a point to that's where I was able to make a, a decent or a, a critical business decision. Right. Where am I going? How how is the money being made? You know, if I'm showing up, uh, what's the opportunity cost? Mm -hmm. Right. I can only make money if I'm in front of people. How do I, you know, make money doing other things? Sure. Um, but I think that was a good point to make that decision versus, you know, I only did 10 people and then I'm like, oh, I'm going to go jump to something else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, just think if you had what those 100 people, for instance, if you had them had them uh, on something like $100 a month for some kind of training, you got yourself yeah. a $10,000 per month business right there. Yep. Yeah. I mean, that's life changing. Uh, I mean, you could you could start in 50 bucks life changing yeah. Yeah. it's yeah. huge um let's 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 actually shift focus here because we're actually we're actually already beyond what we normally do for our <laughs> podcast um as far as as far as timing goes but we want to talk for a second um we know that you're an egp letter subscriber you actually subscribe to the egp letter so we're actually curious before we wrap this up what have been some of your biggest takeaways and what are your thoughts on the letter um I'm going to try to keep this short. Uh, it's probably one of the most powerful tools in my library, and I have a very extensive library, right? I look at the EGP letter as um, like a strategy book, right? So let's take it from a military sense, right? If I'm hitting a target, I have certain strategies in place, right? I can artillery, I can send air in, and they can bomb it. 
Um, I can send, you know, the Navy SEALs in. They can be all sneaky. <laughs> I can send the Marines in and they'll just decimate everything. Right. <laughs> right. But I have these courses of action available to me as a military leader. Right. right. Um, and I also have kind of the hey, this worked this way or this could cause a certain amount of collateral damage. And I think that's what you guys do very well in the Evergreen Prophets letter is you give the strategies, you give how to do it, you give your experience with a particular strategy. You'll say, hey, this is something we're just testing or you'll say, hey, this is something that's tried and true. Mm -hmm. So as a business owner, it's cool to be able to have a doc and I have mine, you know, three hole punched in a binder. Yeah, but right? I, I can it. look at. What's the goal? What am I trying to accomplish? And I can kind of go through the letters. You know, I got the last five issues, right? Um, and I can go through and go, okay, that strategy would work for this situation. All right, now I just got to follow step by step and do it. Or even better, hand it off to my VA and go, hey, go do this. Yes. Right? So I think that's the, the, the power of the Evergreen Profits letter. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of what we're going for. I mean, we <laughs> we actually started calling them playbooks in a lot of our emails. Like, are you going to are you going to sign up for this month's playbook? So mm. um, that that's kind of what we were going for. Now, is there any sort of big takeaway that you've actually implemented in your business and seen results on? Um, is there has there been one aha moment or one specific strategy that you used and and had the some really good results with? Um, I was just thumbing through. And there was one the uh, in the first issue. You talk about the key step tutorial example. Yeah, the KSTs. Right? Yep. So having a KST. So I've done that via video mm -hmm. um, and kind of doing, you know, it kind of gave me uh, that framework for any time I'm doing a how to session. Yep. Right. So if I'm doing how to do this or how to do that, then. I'll use kind of that framework, right? Um, one thing that you guys are doing, and this is not, uh, wait, it is. So <laughs> the affiliate marketing, right? That's one, oh man, I got to tell you, if there's one thing that I've lost money on over the years that now I'm kicking myself in the butt for is affiliate marketing. <laughs> mm -hmm, dude, yes. Um, and it, it, man, whoever's listening to this, if you are not doing affiliate marketing, you are leaving thousands and thousands of dollars a month on the table, no just doubt. as I have, mm. right? Um, and I've been picking it up. Um, I'm just letting y'all know I've, I've, I've been picking up my affiliate marketing uh, skills. <laughs> yeah, uh, good job. Getting, getting better at that. Um, and not from a standpoint, you know, from uh, really doing it the way you guys do it as far as like the latest one you just did I saw was uh, – the piece on uh, lead pages versus click funnels. You guys are doing that one. Mm -hmm. uh, what you've done with, you know, uh, email service uh, providers comparison. So that comparison deal, or even uh, Matt, I think you sent an email on a Facebook tool, mm -hmm. and I bought it just because you said get it right. <laughs> so, you know, Matt, Matt, Matt said he got it. You know, it can help you find audiences. I'm like, oh well, I checked it out, and I'm like, you know, there wasn't much of a buying decision. Because Matt endorsed it, so I bought it, you know? There you um, go. So affiliate marketing, the way you guys explain that, I think that's in, I want to say it's in issue two. We kind of interweave it in everything because we see yeah. it as a just a way that, and, and this is great because I, I tell local business owners, brick and mortar, like you realize affiliate marketing is an easy bolt-on income stream that you could put under your business, sell mm -hmm. to your current customers, just re recommend something. Even if it's Amazon, sign up to Amazon, get a little cut. You yeah. know, it's, it's, that's easy to recommend a book or something. Well, to this day, our business, Evergreen Profits, we make more money from our affiliate promotions than we make from selling our own products and services. Now mm. we've gotten, we've gotten to the point where most of the strategies we're teaching in the letter are because we've implemented these strategies to promote affiliate products, not even our own products. So that's actually become more of an income stream than selling our own products. So if you've already got an existing business, you can just attach affiliate marketing to that business and add a new revenue stream. And over time, that could potentially be an even bigger revenue stream than the business that you're currently running. No doubt. Absolutely. Um, and, and it doesn't matter what business you're in. You know, I think now as I walk around, 
or as I live life and I start looking at businesses as I always do, I always look at, you know, what would be a good affiliate for that, for that business, <laughs> you know? Um, and it's something myself as uh, I'm working on a pretty time intensive project right now. Uh, but in the time that I'm not working on that project, I'm always thinking like, Hey, how can I recommend something? How can I, you know, gain more from affiliate marketing? Cause it's there and it's something that businesses want, you know what I mean? Totally. Um, oh, yeah. Businesses want you to recommend their stuff and pay you for it. Like yep. it's, it's cool. Mm -hmm. and, and here's something that a lot of people don't realize you can do either. Just because a business doesn't have an affiliate program doesn't mean you can't be an affiliate of that business. True, true. You know, exactly. um, so if you find a product that you're really excited about, really passionate about, know you can help spread the word about, know you can evangelize, reach out to that business owner. There's a very good chance they're they'll be willing to give you a little kickback or a little commission or, or whatever, even though they don't have a systemized affiliate program built in. Mm -hmm. We do that with quite a few different companies right now. We, you know, we used to have our agency where we did um, page building for people and branding for people and stuff like that. Now we have partners that do that probably better than we did when we had an agency oh, yeah. that <laughs> we refer them to and get kickbacks on. You know, so Absolutely. just because they don't have an affiliate program doesn't mean you can't be an affiliate of them. Just reach out and, and work out a deal. Exactly. And it, and and one more thing about affiliate, because I just had this conversation with my son. Uh, my son tells me, he's like, Dad, um, you know, he's he about to turn 16. He's like, Dad, I need to make some money, but mm. I don't want to get a job. <laughs> love it. <laughs> right? I love it. <laughs> so the first thing I told him to do was because he can sell. He's already done it a little bit. I said, son, start studying affiliate marketing. Yeah. yeah. And he will. Man, I swear if he gets I mean, because, you know, kids, these teenagers these days, dude, I'm, I'm almost willing to bet you don't need to get a job at McDonald's no. when you have the opportunity to promote other people's products and get paid. I know yeah. you, you can just make you don't even have to make that much affiliate marketing. And you'll <laughs> you'll blow good. McDonald's out of the water and they're going to be so much more advanced with technology than we are. My two year old knows how to use my iPhone. You Scary, know, it's dude. like. And think of, I'm just thinking if it's your son, Omari, they're, he's probably scrappier than you. And I don't know if he's scrappier because you have a lot of cred, <laughs> you know, but he's he's probably scrappy. He's going to do well if he oh, stays yeah. with it, you know. Oh, yeah. My son, so. he, he got hustler tendencies. I say he got hustler <laughs> tendencies. <laughs> there you go. He's uh, learning. So we, we've got a couple last minute wrap up questions that we, we like to ask everybody. Um, okay. And uh, the first one is, do you have a book that you recommend that you that you try to reread frequently. Um, it could be on topics we've talked about or, you know, anything. Just are there any books that you find yourself rereading once a year or that you highly recommend people check out? Uh, I'm going to give you three. So number one is Scientific Advertising okay. by Claude Hopkins. Yep. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, I'm getting down to reading this book probably about every week now. Oh, it's wow. a short read <laughs> and it's free. So that's number one. Um, number two would be... Um, the, oh man, it's kind of a toss up. Let's see. Oh, dot com secrets by Russell Brunson. Uh -huh. Yeah, I did. That's a good one. That's a new staple in my library. I'm, I'm constantly going through Russell stuff anyway. And I think so you can get it book, for like, what? Oh, it's up there, Matt. Um, Matt's trying to find it on his bookshelf. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's far away. I but can't no, reach like, it. <laughs> I think you can get it for like six bucks or something. Yeah, too. it's like six bucks. It's, it's I mean, it's I a free probably, plus shipping thing. Yeah, it's free plus shipping. I got like three of them because I keep hacking the funnel. So, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know, I keep ordering the book. Um, give so me a friend, I've given you know? out copies. Yeah. Cool. Um, and number three is one that um, great leads by Michael Masterson and John Ford. Great okay. leads. Okay. Yeah. I haven't heard of that one. Um oh man, that's a it's it's a classic, right? So from a copywriter standpoint, I I kind of focus on all the old books. Mm -hmm. But um Great Leads uh is damn near a master's education in in copy. Wow. Um, <laughs> right? So if the if the headline is 80% of the of the sales letter, you also got to look at the lead that supports the headline. So the way you lead into a marketing message is very important. And what the one of the best parts in this book, it talks about market market awareness levels. Mm -hmm. Right. So mm -hmm. whether you're you know, you're going to have a harder time competing in a market that's most aware. Right. Right. Just as you'll have a hard time competing in a market that's completely unaware. Mm -hmm. Right. That but there's sense. a sweet spot where people are either problem or solution aware. That's the sweet spot. But the most money is made in the unaware market. 
that's where all the masses are, mm-hmm. right? That's true. But your marketing message, every target market that you have will have variations of those awareness levels. So when you're doing your marketing, you got to be aware of that. And you got to be able to write to each of those awareness levels because you don't know where everybody is. Mm. All so right. gotcha. buying that book. Cool. Yeah, no, great leads. Yeah, I, I, I've got it on lead. Kindle, but I actually haven't read it yet. It's one that I've, I've purchased but haven't managed to, yeah. to sit down and read yet. Um, and then when we were at Traffic and Conversion Summit, we were we were talking to you and we asked for a, a recommendation for a book on copywriting. And yes. um, and you told us one and Joe and I both went and bought copies of it and actually told people in our most recent letter that they all need to go pick it up too. <laughs> and um, I'm showing it on camera right now. So what's Amari, it called? Flip it around so I can read it. The it's advertising called The Advertising Solution, Solution by Chris Chris Simpson and uh, Brian Kurtz. Yeah, Craig Simpson and Brian Kurtz. So this book, you know, I've read, uh, if you look at the lessons from the legends, so I have books from all the legends sitting in my upper left-hand corner of my bookcase so I can pull it out whenever I need a smack upside the head. Nice. The advertising solution is a collection of all the legends' greatest teaching points, Mm -hmm. right? So you don't have to go through the Robert Collier letter book, which is, I just pulled out the copy, which is 466 pages, Ooh, yeah. right? Or, um, let's see, Eugene Swartz Breakthrough Advertising, which isn't even in print anymore, <laughs> right? It gives you all the, the big picture principles, right? So it, this book, I call it like the, the principal Bible of marketing because it has all the legends and all their, their principles all in right one there. book. Yeah. Dude, copywriting, I mean, one of the, Matt just found the uh, Robert Collier I have the Robert Collier letter book sitting on my, and my it's bookshelf. it's fat. Too. It's a fat book. It's <laughs> freaking A. But, and it's written in different language, so it's a hard read, but, you true. know. Um, but, I mean, if you if think about it. Was about, easy, everybody would do it. The two things, I mean, Matt Matt and I, we for ourselves, but also just in, in general for any business owner, I think if you got really good at copywriting, you know, really persuasive messaging, it's amazing. You need that skill. You need to study up on that. And that's exactly what Amari is recommending here with the books. The other one's traffic. Like how do you, how do you get those targeted eyeballs, those people to your page or to your, to your business, talk to them, whatever marketing groups, those two things, if you master the traffic and the messaging, your copywriting, you're, you're already 80% ahead of the, ahead of the game. Yep. Yeah, and you can sell anything you want. Doesn't matter what business you become business agnostic. Yeah. Doesn't matter what business you're, Yep. Right. And that's that's kind of the big thing I got out out of marketing was if you look at what I'm doing now, so far removed mm. from where I started, um, it's because, you know, um, I've started focusing on the principles of marketing. So now I can apply it to any business. I've consulted people and I think I've consulted in like eight different industries now. Oh, um, damn, dude. Yeah. The principles are the same. They yep. don't, you know. Hey, they're, they're you're, the same. you're getting called out right now on Facebook, actually. I'm just going to say it right now. Um Chelsea Wilson uh, said, leave it to Amari not to give a shout out to his own book. Hashtag, <laughs> hashtag humble. <laughs> What's your book, man? I didn't even know you had a book. <laughs> <See>? <laughs> so um, I wrote a book um, in 2016. It's on Amazon. It's called Immediate Action Marketing Tactical Marketing System. Okay. And that book was written um, – specifically for firearms instructors. So I took the marketing principles that I used over the last five years and put it all in a book. Got it. And I made it nice and short. It's 110 pages. Um, but for anybody thinking about getting the book, uh, if you go to immediateactionmarketing.com, um, click the button right on the front page and you can get the book. Got it. Sweet. Awesome, right, man. We'll link it up in there. All right. So uh, what's that? I said with some bonuses. Oh, sweet, man. Yeah, I had no clue you even had a book. So thanks, Chelsea, for calling him out. <laughs> <laughs> she's I, adorable. She's what? <laughs> I said she's adorable. I love Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> she's watching live. All right, last question here. Um, All right, so, uh, oh, you can. You, do you want to ask the last question, Joe? Yes. Go ahead. It makes me feel important. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Mari, what's, what's one question that. Well, that's not the last question, but okay. Uh, go okay. Ahead. Go yeah. ahead and ask that All one. All right, so we're, we're just going to go along. What's one question that someone should ask you? Maybe it's about copywriting. Maybe it's firearms. That's cool because I want to know about this too. Mm-hmm. Um, but people don't ask you. For some reason, it's just like something that you should teach, you should answer, but no one's asking the question. Do you got something that comes to mind? Um, it's kind of a toughie. It's a weird the, one. The, sh- 
the should ask question is the same should ask question I ask everybody that I meet Hmm. is, you know, how did you overcome the challenge for X, Y, Z? So let's say for firearms, right? Um, How did you like people will always ask, you know, what gun I should buy? Right. Uh, The the better question is for that particular situation is what gun I should buy for my particular situation. Hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. How did how did I you know, Amari, how did you figure out what firearm to buy for your lifestyle? Right. Because what I had for the military is completely different than what I have for home defense. Yep. There's there's a there's a slight difference in tool choices there. When it comes to marketing or business, right? Um, the should ask question is um, where did where what book are you reading? <laughs> mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. That's that's the number one question. Uh, it either what book are you reading or how did you ever overcome this situation? Whatever that situation would mean, be, uh, right? Yeah. So the the prefix of the business question should be how did you overcome dot 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 or what book are you reading? I love it. That's cool. Yeah, because cool, those cool. things, uh, I bet that would that would clear the path, clear the worries out of a lot of people if they're starting a business or just hung up on something. You just ask those simple questions. And yeah, man, the book question's a good one too. Because I mean, them, yeah. pretty much any problem you can come up with, I could probably think of a book that I've read that at least addresses it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I got that from uh, listening to Dan Kennedy. Uh, he that was his thing. Uh, he was to speak on the uh, he was on the speaking circuit and he was speaking with Donald Trump. Yeah, um, which is kind of timely. And and he said the one thing about Donald Trump, he said he asked everybody in there, what book are you reading? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I actually remember that story from Dan Kennedy. And I think when I when I remember hearing that story from Dan Kennedy, the question was actually, what three books are you reading right now? Mm-hmm. He doesn't mm. go to you and yeah. say, what one book are you reading? He says, what three <laughs> yeah. books are you reading right now? Interesting. O- almost sort of like pre-assuming that you're reading multiple books and, and you know, trying to really educate <laughs> <Yeah>. yourself. <laughs> yes. Self-education is important. Love it, cool. man. All right, Matt, what's that other question so that you were... the final question that we always <laughs> ask people is where can people go learn more about you and uh, and uh, find your stuff? Um, so the best place to find me is on Facebook right now. I'm mm-hmm. working on a lot of top secret projects, so I'm not promoting a whole lot of things. Um, but Facebook, you can find me, Omari Broussard. Connect with me there. Um, and also uh, immediateactionmarketing.com. Um, is the website that I've been playing with uh, for teaching and, and, and giving out marketing information specifically for firearms instructors. Uh, if you're just a, if you're out of the firearms instructing industry and you're just a small business owner and you know you have a question, just reach out to me on Facebook, Omari Broussard. You'll see my picture and um, I'll be you know more than happy to help you out. Um, yeah. Right on, awesome. man. And I, and I love your, your – uh, I want a headshot like yours, man. I just need to hold a big-ass <laughs> rifle out oh there with some badass shades. <laughs> I got I to gotta see what this hey, headshot looks like. I got to thank uh, Cheryl Marie. Uh, Cheryl, that oh, goes to uh, uh, oh, yeah. Photo Bakery. Uh, Picture Bakery. Sorry. Picture. Yeah. Um, she she took all my stunning photos. I can't thank her enough. Oh, she she's... did all mine, too. She's she's amazing. Yeah. yeah. See, I'm, I'm so, lacking. I need to hire her, man. Yeah, you gotta get Cheryl on board. She's I, phenomenal. I'm just gonna bring a random gun for some reason, and she's like, "Why do you have a gun? You you mark it online. I don't care. <laughs> this fun." Wait, hey, wait till I get back home and and take you out there so we yes. can do it safely. I don't want any shenanigans. Good call. You know, my reputation's online. All right, man. <laughs> hey, let's make it happen. I'm open. All right, Omari, it's been real, man. It's been fun. Thank you. Awesome, man. Good talking to you. Um, I really appreciate the time, and you guys know how to reach me, so anytime you need me, just let me know. You got it, man. Absolutely, man. Cool. We'll talk soon. All right, later. All right, bye. Hey, thanks so much for tuning in to this episode of the Hustle and Flow Chart Podcast. Now, if you don't know already, myself and my partner, Joe Fear, every single week we put together this killer weekly newsletter that's completely free. If you go to theweeklyprofit.com, you can get on this weekly newsletter. And what we do with this newsletter is we scour the internet. We read every piece of content, listen to blog posts, uh, check out new software and tools, and we distill down the best of the best into a weekly newsletter and deliver it directly to your inbox every single week. So head over to theweeklyprofit.com and make sure you're signed up to receive that weekly newsletter. You're going to love it. Thanks so much again for listening to the Hustle and Flowchart podcast. We'll see you in the next one.